Hello, welcome to my floss tube. My name is Amy. I'm Fiber Arts Amy here and on Instagram. Um, I'm back today to do floss tube number six. Today is uh, Tuesday, November 9th, 2021. Um, I can hear my dog running down the stairs, so she's coming to join us. Um, sorry if you can hear her. Say hi. Um, so today I'm going to do the last of my um, previous FFO parade that I've been um, doing here to get started. And I also have a ton of whips. It took me longer to get back here than I planned. Um, and I was also sick <laughs> for a little while in there. We had another non-COVID virus um, just spread through our house. So everybody had some sick days in there. Um, so it's been a while, so I've actually worked on um, quite a few things. Uh, so I'll go ahead and jump in and get started if that's okay. Today what I did was I gathered up all of the remaining old FFOs from my house, which basically are just from um, my kitchen and dining area. We have like a combined kitchen and dining room. Um, when we moved into this house, we had like a small kitchen and a small dining room and um, we knocked down a wall and combined it into one um, much larger space. So anyway, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for, for joining me today. And um, if, if I will tell the information when I have it about like designers and all of that. Um, but if there's any questions you have, anything you want me to try to like hunt up, let me know and um, like ask me any questions and I'll, I'll do the best I can to, to hunt up more information for you. Um, so the first one um, is by, this is by Hindsight. I'm guessing it's just called Herbs. I'm not sure. I actually only did this last year. I bought the, the frame, um, which is one of those case frames and the uh, chart years ago like more than 10 years ago <laughs> and um only just did it last summer i think i had put like a couple of stitches in like i had started the h um and i did this in i just did this in dmc and i think i just grabbed colors that i liked that i thought would look good my dog's interested in my whips clearly um so next I have, I wish I knew the designer for this. So here's my multiplication chart. Um, I took this from, some of you might recognize it just with its style. I took this from a much larger chart. There was like stuff up here <laughs> and like borders. Um, there, was, there was more to it than this. Um, I just stitched the chart basically and then just added, like I added a couple of stitches just on the corners just to make it look a little bit, I don't know, more polished or something. I didn't want to stitch the whole chart. I just wanted to stitch the multiplication chart and I stitched it in pink on, on pink fabric. This is a pink Monaco that I just got from a big box store and I just used like a dark kind of um, raspberry red DMC. I don't remember what number it was. Um, my two oldest sons um, or my two sons, which are to my two oldest children, um, really love pink. It, pink was a favorite color for both of them. Well, still is a favorite color, but it was the color for a long time. Um, so I stitched a multiplication chart for them. And I actually finished this like early 2020, like sometime in the spring, which was handy given that we then basically were homeschooling for a year. <laughs> um, so it actually came in handy. My kids do take this off the wall, including my daughter now who's in second grade. They do take it off the wall and like there's fingerprints all over it because they'll slide their fingers along to to find what the to find the numbers that they're looking for. Um so this I have absolutely no idea where this chart came from. I mean, I know it came from an LNS, but I don't know which one or how long ago. Sorry about the glare. Um, the chart did come with this. This is like a huge like sun button and the chart came with it. Um, I like stitching this. It was just a small quick stitch. I remember doing it. I love fairies. Um, 
and I, was, I did it in a day a bit, so 2008, so that was a long time ago. Um, I enjoy doing it. It's just a small, simple piece. It hangs in, in my dining area. So many of y'all are going to recognize this, and it's still the, um, the designer's name is escaping me. There were a series of like two or three of these, um, you know, like poems, and I have at least one more of them um, to do. Um, but this is just stitched on, on like a, a natural linen. It's a wishel, some sort of like naturally looking linen, like it's got the little specks in there. Um, I love this piece. It was fun and easy to stitch. I messed up framing it. At the time, I, I just took it for granted that framers knew like that they had to put a spacer in, um, between the fabric and the, the frame or the fabric and the glass. And I didn't, explicitly ask this framer to do it and um, she didn't do it so this one the some of the stitches are very smashed like you can he see down here the a isn't even that distinguishable because the stitches are kind of smashed um, I do have a relatively loose tension um, it actually always surprises me when I see somebody else's work and like how tightly I don't know if most people but most of the work I've seen of other people's up close. It's like pulled really tight and mine's not like that. My work, my stitch, you're not, you'll see. Maybe you can see. My stitches are fluffy. They are plump. They stick up <laughs> off the fabric. Um, I think I generally have pretty even tension, but it's, it's a relatively loose kind of plump tension and I like it that way. And if they put a spacer in, it's not a problem. It's just that in this particular piece, there's no spacer. So one day I will probably, maybe once my kids all move out, uh, I should disassemble this, wash it to get those stitches to plump back up again. And um, I would have it reframed in the same frame. I just need to take it to a framer and ask them to put a spacer in and like reassemble it. So. But I enjoyed that one. I love Halloween. So... That's one of my one of my favorites. Okay, so these next four are part of a series. And these are each flowers or herbs, um, and these all hang in my in my kitchen too. I'm trying to think of what this linen is. It's kind of speckled. It's a linen, and it's kind of speckled, and it's from a big box store. But I would have bought it, you know. A dozen or more years ago so I'm not sure um, exactly what it was called these charts came out of a magazine um, and I don't often buy magazines as they come out although some of the British magazines I like um, but I do love when I find like old stitching magazines in um, like Goodwills and stuff I love getting those and going through them so I'm not sure even if these flowers, I mean, they would have been stitched in like the two, late 2000s, like 2008, 9, 10 maybe, um, late 2000 aughts, I should say. Um, although I only had these framed about five or six years ago. Um, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure what magazine they came from, um, but there are four of them and I love them. I love this, oh, I guess I, I stitched it in 2007. I didn't even realize I uh, I can't see in the, the camera that I actually dated it. So 2007, um, this one's a marigold. And I finally got them framed and hung them up once we redid our kitchen. And I had a place to hang them. This one's jasmine. And I stitched them all in the same fabric. Um, yeah, I just love, I love the style of those old, like, botanical prints. This is comfrey. I need to clean the glass or something, like, Lord knows. Yogurt, like, goes flying in my <laughs> kitchen. My dining room, peanut butter, milk, all kinds of stuff. So, Lord knows what got on, on the glass here. But there's comfrey. And the last one 
which is probably my favorite, is spider wart. And I had them framed so they all have the same frame and the same outer mat. And then I had them each have a different inner mat that um, like coordinated well with the particular plant that was being depicted. So, but I like how, I really like how those turned out. I really love having them in my kitchen. Um, so this is actually the only piece I'm going to show you today that I did not do. One good thing about filming these like old FFO parades is that I actually end up dusting <laughs> all of these old frames. It's not something I do very often. Um, this is a needlepoint piece that was done by my great aunt, or my great aunt, my grandmother in 1933. Um, she would have been pretty young then. She's no longer, she's no longer alive. She passed away quite a few years ago, 10 or more years ago, I think. Um, 1933, I'm feeling like she would have been like 20-ish around that time, but it looks like all basically satin stitch needlepoint. And I love having this. I love she wrote her initials on it and the date. Um, I love it. I just, I love having this. I love having a, a piece of needlework that, um, that my grandmother did. I think that's really special. Um, when I got it, it was my grand, my grandfather had framed it for her and, um, like himself. And it had just like a piece of paper as a mat and it was like glued down and it was kind of a mess. Um, so I did disassemble it. I didn't feel comfortable washing it, um, but I disassembled it and at least and took it to a professional framer um, to at least help prevent any further damage to it and, um, and like to get all that glue off of there. Um, this is another piece full of beads. I love this so much. This just makes me smile. Um, just it's just so cheerful it's like the white frame and the periwinkle mat and that fairy is a lot of beads this came as a kit and I don't remember by whom I'm sure I bought it at an LNS um, but I love her even like the water drop sorry my dog's barking Amazon's probably delivering something um, but uh, I love that like the little water droplets are beads. It's just sparkly and cheerful and just pretty. And I just like it. It's just a nice little spot of just pure prettiness in my kitchen. And pretty soon I'm gonna have stuff falling down. There's so many in here. It's going pretty quickly. This might not be a super long one today. Famous last words, right? Since generally I talk for over an hour. <sighs> this was me just playing around. I'm still dusting. Um, I, I don't know where I got this. I think it was like, I think I had, I found like a free chart online. So these are like the runes. These are runes and their names. And I think I got, this is just this piece of, I think it might be Picture This Plus, like really old Picture This Plus. Um, the spacing on this is kind of bad. I did this so many years ago. Did I write the date? No, I didn't. Um, and there's no date on the back. I, ha I found like these runes and, and their names. I'm not even sure if I found them as like a cross stitch chart or just like, or, you know, if I was just making it up as I went along, it's all backstitch. And then I just like backstitched a border. My, the spacing's awful. <laughs> like nothing centered or even, um, but I enjoyed doing it. I think at the time, this was years and years and years ago. This would have been like probably 2006, 2007. I remember being like, I just had a relatively small piece of this fabric that was just sparkly and I wanted to use it and I wanted to put something on it. So I just grabbed like a dark purple floss and, um, sorry for all that glare. Um, I just grabbed the dark purple floss and, and just backstitched the runes and their names and then put that like simple border around it. Nothing was, I think, charted. I just, just kind of winged it. 
Um, okay. I have two really big pieces. Um, this one, oh, the other one's gonna fall. Okay, sorry for all the clinking. So this is, if I remember correctly, it's called Alchemical Romance by Ink Circles. And this is stitched, it's just on a natural linen. Um, and I just used like a maroon or burgundy looking DMC. Do you want to come up for you? Your dog wants you to come up. Come up. Come, on, come up. Does anyone else's pets get confused when <laughs> filming a floss queue? Anyway. I love this piece. Um, it's big, but it was a quick stitch because um, it's mostly empty space in there. <laughs> um, but I love it. I love how it turned out, and it hangs in my um, my kitchen. I used my name. What's the date? I stitched it in 2008, um, and I did on the back. So the pattern, I don't know if you can see, blowing it out. Oh, there we go. So the pattern has the name, like there's a part of the pattern that has the name for each of the symbols. So what I did was I photocopied that part of the chart and just taped it on the back because I do not remember what all of these symbols mean, but they tell you what they are, you know, in the chart as you're stitching it. Um, so I taped it to there just so there'd always be a reference for it. Um, I, my, I mentioned before my um, background is in chemistry, so um, I've just always been fascinated by like alchemy and kind of the roots of, of science and different scientific disciplines. So I was really drawn to that piece. Oh, sorry for bopping the camera. You can come up for you. Good girl. Okay, lay down. Lay down. Um, so the last one that's a previous, I have one kind of new FFO, but this is the last previous FFO, and I'm actually really proud of it, and, um, sorry, I have to get something out of here so that I can tell you who the designer is. Um, so, it's, this is huge, I'm not even sure how I'm going to show it. I stitched this in 2007 and it's enormous so one sec while I pick up what I just dropped okay so this is trees of the 13 moons that's what we call it so this is I I designed the layout and the fonts like the writing myself um, the charts for the um, the plants I did not design myself. Those I took from Moongate. So if you've been watching my other floss tubes, you have seen me over and over and over again <laughs> show you designs of like unicorns and Pegasus and Griffin and all kinds of things that I'm like, I can't remember the name of this company. I stitched so much by this company and I don't remember their name. The name's Moongate. <laughs> I found it. This is a different um, a chart pack by them. Um, so what I did, they had a, a chart pack that was all just like flora. It, it was different flowers. And they did a lot of this kind of like semi-witchy stuff where it was like, you know, animals or plants associated with different months or different moons and times of the year and that sort of thing. And in this... Um, particular chart pack they had the the charts for the branches or leaves coming from each of the 13 each of the trees that are associated with, with the 13 moons of the year which you don't always have 13 but when you do this is what they are so I but they're just as like individual charts in the in the packet that you buy um, I wanted to put them together. I wanted to um, make like one piece that was a chart of, of all 13 gathered together. So, I mean, it's not very sophisticated. I just came up, came out with a layout. Um, in retrospect, I wish I had done something a little bit differently up here. 
um, because obviously there's still like a lot of empty space there. Um, I think I might, like, I could have done some sort of, like, scroll work design here and there or something to, like, a corner scroll work design or something to um, help fill that space a little bit better. But I'm still happy with it. Um, but I also, just like with the alchemical romance piece, I'm not going to remember what each of these are. I'm not a botanist. I'm horrible at remembering, like, plant names and things. So I, um, I just backstitched each of the... Um, plant names and wrote like which moon like first through 13th um so I love this piece um I know my daughter really likes it she's been asking about it a lot lately um it was not even though it's huge <laughs> it um did not take as long <laughs> to stitch as you might think because it's just so much empty space each of those little leaves is a really quick stitch on its own um, so to put it all together is really, really wasn't that bad. But I'm very proud of this. I really, really love that. And um, for any of you, if you're still watching, who might have been wondering where, um, who the designer was for all of these patterns that this whole time I'm thinking like, I don't remember. It's Moongate. Um, I did do a search. They, um, I think I found like one or two packets of their stuff on um, the secondary market, like on eBay. Uh, but I, I, they're not, as far as I can tell, currently designing. I don't think their patterns are currently available. Um, I did love them. I bought tons, like I bought all of the, all of the packets I found at the time. You know, this is a dozen or more years ago. I bought all of them that were available to me at my LNS um, because I really, really liked their, um, their stuff. It was like fun and easy and very in the vein of what I like. Um, made a nice break from like the Marabilia stitching. And uh, this one I have out, I actually dug up because I have this kitted. They have um, Pleasures of the Seasons. They this one's called the Tapestry Collection. This packet had like medieval, it's like a medieval theme, Pleasures of the Seasons, this, was, this one's winter. I have the chart. This is like a mini of the chart. You're not going to be able to stitch from that. There's like a blow up of that chart in the, the chart pack. Um, I This has been kitted up for more than a dozen years, and I should probably start stitching <laughs> soon. So this is what I dug up to find the um, the name of the company so I could finally give them appropriate credit that it was Moongate that designed all of those those charts that I keep talking about. Oh, uh, last FFO, this isn't really a previous one because I just FFO'd it. Um, I've shown you guys this um, finish, but it wasn't FFO'd. This was, um, oh, who was it? Was it a, I think it was a Riolis kit? Just a small, this was, I think of them as like, like nice little breaks from the big, from the like more serious big stitching. Um, this was just a little owl I did in a few nights sitting and watching shows with my husband. Um, and it is a pincushion. So I got this, um, it's just a tart pan that's been put on a wooden base. Um, I, uh, I cut out some um, mat board uh, that was the size of like the inner diameter circle of the, the tart pan and just um, stuffed it with uh, uh, with wool, with sheep's wool, um, and just finished it like this so it would be a pincushion. I love pincushions. For little, for small stitch pieces, my preference is usually to make a usable object out of it. Um, and since I do sew a lot and stuff too, this one became a pincushion. It's not perfect, but um, it's good enough. Um, this I found on Etsy. I can't remember the name of the shop um, at the moment. It's actually quite a ways back in my like purchase history. But if anybody wants to know the shop that I got this like wooden base and tart pan from on Etsy, just um, leave me a message and I, I'll go back and, and look it up for you so you can know where I got that. They weren't expensive. I got, and they come in different colors. I got this one and I think a like a sagey green one without really knowing what I was going to put in them. But I thought the white one worked really well for my little owl. So 
so that's it with the FFOs. Ooh, 25 minutes. I'm doing pretty well, I think. So I'm going to move on to whips. And I, it, since it's been longer than I intended since I filmed last time, uh, I have worked on a lot of things. Um, the first thing that I worked on, and I'm not going to, let me put behind it. Um, I'm not going to take it out of the cue snap this time. So this is, um, let me show you the, the cover pick. This is Teresa Wensler's Princess and Dragon. This is one of her dragons, so it's not currently available, but you certainly can find it um, on the secondary market. It was published in a book and, as a chart, and then I actually also have the kit, and it was published as like a chart pack too. I did not work on this much. I filled in some more of the yellow up here, and I saw the string on my um, needle, and I worked on some of the border. Um, I worked on this for a couple of days, and then basically got sick. <laughs> I never felt like quite getting back to it. Um, this one, I, I love working on it, but I do, I basically have sort of resigned myself to the idea that I'm only going to be working on it on days that my kids are at school. Um, most weeks, not these last couple of weeks when I, I got sick and then we also were just busy and there was some weird stuff going on. Um, I've gotten in a pretty good habit of like a couple of days a week, actually two or three days a week getting a good hour or two of stitching on this while my kids are at school and it's quiet in my house and I can just put on floss tube and focus on this. Um, and I, I feel comfortable doing that and I'm not making mistakes and I feel like things are going well. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping next week to get back to this. It's not going to happen this week. Um, things are pretty busy this week and also my kids have, they actually have two days off of school this week. Um, we have like parent teacher conferences and then also, um, there's like a teacher work day. So, and vaccinations. <laughs> My kids are going to start their COVID vaccines this week and I'm so excited. Um, so anyway, hopefully next week I will get back to being able to work on Princess and the Dragon. Um, because it definitely did not happen very much over these last few weeks. So... The other thing that happened is, so as I was getting, I, I got sick, and as I was starting to feel better, like, Marabilia just took over my life. <laughs> I got, like, super obsessed. And I've been working on tons of Marabilias. Um, I will show you, since I was sick, I took out, I, I think I've shown this before, I mentioned that it's my, like, my sick day project that's been going for well over a decade at this point. This is, what's it called? Romantic Stitcher, I believe. I'll refold the chart so that you can see the cover. So this is Romantic Stitcher. I'm gonna say it's by Passione Ricamo. Every time I say that, I'm going to apologize for potentially butchering that name. I have no idea how to actually pronounce it. Do not speak Italian. Um, but I did make progress on her. Um, am I showing you the front? Oh, you can totally see through the back. This is on a Wishel linen that I bought at a big box store. Just gonna rip that for now. So I think I put some stitches on our hair. I still have a couple of strings hanging. Yeah, I worked up top. I did some on her hair, maybe a little bit in her dress, and I think some skin. Um, I didn't do tons, but I was feeling sick and thought, you know what? I haven't worked on this in a really long time. Let's get her back out. So my sick day project came out. Let me button it back up so I don't lose things. Also, while I was feeling sick, I grabbed, um, oh, I don't have a cover photo of this one. I grabbed, um, Prague Princess, 
Ella the Frog Princess, I think is what she's called, by Mirabilia. I have very little done on this. And I still have floss on my, I'll just fold this, it's probably gonna work. Still have floss on my needle there. This one I'm actually stitching in hand. Sometimes I'm just in the mood to stitch in hand. Um, so this is like the top of her dress and her bodice. And I worked my way up to some hair and I've just started her skin. This is an opalescent fabric from, um, oh God, the name's escaping me. She's on Etsy. Rolanda. Fabric by Rolanda. Oh, it'll come to me later. I'll do my best to remember to link it in the show description. Um, I think it's hand dyed by Rolanda. That's what it is. Hand dyed by Rolanda on Etsy. I love her fabrics um, for a number of reasons. Um, there's so many that are just like bright and colorful. And I am not, I'm not, I'm not somebody who only likes one style. Um, there's days where I'm like feeling more primitive. There's days I'm feeling like bright and cheerful, which has been more where I'm at lately. But her fabrics are so many that are just bright and cheerful. There's this fabulous modeling, tons of color. It's not usually what I pick for a big Marabilia. I usually pick something that has much more subtle shading in the background. Um, I don't know, this one made me happy. This combination made me happy with a really yellow dress um, that the princess has and then that like kind of crazy purple and pinky purple background with, all, with the opalescent sparkles. Something about that, just some days that's what I'm in the mood for. Tons of color, really bright, sparkly. That's what I was in the mood for that day. So the, another thing that I pulled out, I was actually in bed for like three days when I was sick. I have no, it felt like I had like a flu-like illness. I was just completely devoid of energy. Um, it just all completely sapped out of me. Um, I do not have the preview pictures for this either. I'm just looking at my flosses for a minute. I need to do something about that. Um, I don't have a preview picture for this either because I have a photocopy of the chart in here. Um, this is my very minimal start <laughs> on Maidens of the Seasons by Mirabilia. So this is a fat half of fabric. Um, I think this is probably a picture this plus of some sort. Um, we really don't need this huge piece on screen because I barely have any stitches in it. Um, so this is one of those pieces that I love. Maidens of the Seasons is one of my all-time favorite Mirabilia's and yet I never stitch on it. I don't know, I feel like I can't be the only one that does this. Here we go, I still got a thread hanging. This is my start. Now these stitches down here are at least a dozen years old. <laughs> this, and actually, yeah, that's right. These are a dozen years old and then all of this, I think I did a couple weeks ago when I was sick. Um, I don't have a good explanation for it, but um, the Marabilias that are my favorite are too often not the Marabilias that I stitch on. And I don't know why. <laughs> I know that just because I like the finished, like my favorite, like I like what the finished object is gonna look like, that doesn't necessarily, for me, mean it's gonna be a fun stitch. Um, I know for this one, so I'm doing, I'm doing all four Maidens. It comes in two charts. So there was Maidens of the Seasons 1 and Maidens of the Season 2. And one of them was Spring and Summer and the other was Autumn and Winter. But I'm putting them together. I'm going to do all four on one piece of fabric. Um, and I'm actually like mixing up the order. 
I'm gonna do winter, spring, summer, fall. Um, so like spring and summer in the middle and then I'm splitting up winter and autumn to put them on either end. Um, this here is spring. Maidens of the seasons, spring. Um, I, I, I know at least for a time, part of the reason it didn't get worked on was because it just seemed so overwhelming. Um, it felt like it could never possibly be finished. But of course, if I never work on it, of course it's not gonna be finished. Um, I want to do a better job bringing out the Marabillias that are my favorites and actually working on them. Um, every time I make plans, my plans go out the window because um, I, I end up just stitching on whatever I feel like stitching on. Um, I don't really like, I don't like having a specific rotation. I don't like having, I'll make goals, but they're kind of like lofty goals. They're like, sorry, my kid's iPad's dinging. Um, they're not, um, they're not plans. They really are just like goals. They're not, they're not written in stone or set in stone. I don't, I don't use them to put more pressure on myself. But one thing that I really, really, I've started to and would really like to continue to do more of is making an effort to pull out the Marabillias or Teresa Wenzler's or whatever that are my favorites that I really do want to see done one day. Because um, like I said, if I don't work on it, well then it's certainly never going to get done. Um, this does, I heard, um, why is it every time I go to film a floss tube, it's like everyone's name just flies out of my brain. Um, Kyle from Stitch Again Sounds, I believe, um, he was talking about the needle paints floss. Um, there are some needle paints that are called for in, um, I think... In one of the seasons I, I think I think Kyle said winter I haven't looked recently um, so needle paints floss are flosses that um, Nora Corbett's mother Marilyn Levitt emblem had died specifically so she could design with them so there's several lavender and lace pieces that call for needle paints floss and some needle paints are called for in this as well um, and I do have the needle paints um, I don't have them on my floss ring, which is what I was looking at. I have all the flosses, all the beads, everything. Um, I do have the needle paint, just not with this project. I need to put them with this so I don't accidentally pull them for, for something else because I would, I, I really want to use the, the originals that were called for, for that piece. So, what else? I, so this is what took probably fully half of my stitching time since the last time I, I filmed a regular floss tube. So this is Renaissance Mermaid from Marabellia. So somebody I follow on Instagram, Kitschy Whips, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'll try to remember to link that below too. She has been showing this on her Instagram feed lately and she's actually up to the point of beating it. And I started Renaissance Mermaid several years ago as um, a travel project. <laughs> I kind of, um, at the time, was very in, you know, I really love stitching Marabillias. I typically don't like stitching little stuff as much. And um, I was like, this is ridiculous. Why do I keep trying to like force myself to work on this little stuff as travel pieces? I just need a Marabillia that's my travel piece. So this was my travel piece for a long time. You know that I'd work on waiting on kids, you know, activities and that sort of thing. Um, and so there wasn't tons done on it. I had some skin, I had a lot of hair, and I had some tail done as well as some of like this purse or whatever she's holding. It kind of reminds me of like a fancy morning star, like medieval weapon. I, I, anyway, it's still beautiful. It's got a big, beautiful charm that goes in the middle of it. So this had been started as a travel project. I had made what I would think of for a travel project, quite a lot of progress on it, just 
sitting on it waiting. I had, I sat on it one day in a, um, auto repair center for like four hours <laughs> working on it. Um, but it had basically sat since COVID started and I hadn't worked on it. And I was watching Kitschy Whips on Instagram and hers was like coming along and it was so beautiful. And I was like, I need to get mine out. This is ridiculous. Lord knows when I'm actually going to have a travel project again. Um, I just really wanted to get it back out. It was really inspired. So um, she was screaming at me. So I got her out and I feel like I got tons done. I, um, I put some more hair in. I put some more skin in both in her face and in her abdomen. Um, most of this is new most of the this is all water lilies there and some of what's in the bottom of her tail is new um, I had I had done some here and I had done some here but they weren't connected so I did all of that work connecting them and um, I ended up putting it away for a little bit she has um, there's crinic that like the rest of her tail from her abdomen down is crinic and um, I really didn't think I I didn't think one spool would be enough especially for one of the colors so I ordered some more crinic just to make sure um, I wouldn't have problems with like dialogs and stuff and it has come in so the next time I stitch on her if I want to I can go work on some of that crinic in the tail and then obviously the bottom of her tail um, I need to finish but yeah I just like she was screaming at me like loud really really um, begging me to to put some work in on her so she got like I worked on her I think for almost two weeks um, she got almost all of my stitching time um, I think because I was working on Renaissance Mermaid and Renaissance Mermaid is is not very colorful like it is I like her very much but she is definitively like blues and greens and I'm stitching her on green fabric and um, so she started to feel kind of monotonous and kind of monotone and again I would gotten into this like pretty thing um, so I pulled out uh, Florentina again by Marabilia. This is what she is supposed to look like. Um, I just needed, I think I needed a break from, from the monotony of the blues and greens in Renaissance Mermaid. So this one's not very far along. It was string hanging. I'm going to go out of the way. Um, so these are some of the leaves she's holding. This is her bodice and, and part of her abdomen and dress. So not that much done, um, but I did work on this for a day. Put some more stitches in, especially a lot of that white, like up top. I think I finished my green strand at the time and then worked on white and some more of the, the purpley shade that's on my, on my needle now. This is a um, color and cotton fabric. I do not remember what it's called. Um, but it, it always cheers me up. It's like such a bright aqua color that um, it just makes me happy. So, and I feel like more and more lately, and I consider this a good thing, um, what I stitch day by day has more than anything been just about like what's gonna make me happy today um, I have some things that I would like to finish like um, red by Marabilia I haven't worked on it since I filmed last time I just other things have been calling to me um, and I've had that like pretty <laughs> vibe going which Red is beautiful, but it doesn't have that like cheerful, like pretty vibe to me. So I just haven't felt like working on it. And I've been trying not to like beat myself up about ignoring red um, to stitch on other things. So, God, there's 
there's so many, so many things I stitched on. So this is Moonlight Lullaby. Um, I haven't worked on this a lot, but um, on Sunday I did put some, well, quite a few stitches in on her. Still got a, a string hanging. Um, oh, let's see behind it. Color. Well, you can see the polka dots from the back. I apologize. I need to get one of those boards. Um, but um, this is the piece that I'm doing as a, um, I'm going to show it better. Doing it as a birth sampler for my daughter, for my mother-in-law to hang in her house. Um, there's a quote at the bottom that instead of doing the quote, I'm going to put her birth details. Um, but I got quite a bit more of like the shades of purple and like purpley blue. I did some more white here. Um, haven't done any more border. But making progress on that, which makes me happy because this is for somebody else who knows that I'm working on it for them because they requested it. Um, and I don't work well <laughs> when I'm obligated. I don't do a good job of... Um, Kind of like being feeling obligated to do a piece is kind of like the kiss of death for me um it doesn't matter if it's stitching or quilt or what once somebody knows or once there's like i need to give that to them like for christmas or birthday or something it's like the last thing i want to work on so i was happy i actually got that out the other day um something i started last night is um, Rookie Woods, which is a, I don't have a, a preview picture. Um, it's a mystery stitch along from Tempting Tangles. And I just grabbed a Levy Moore sleeve this morning to store everything in. I actually watched um, Lindy Stitches, Stephanie Webb, Lindy Stitches, her most recent floss tube yesterday. And she's working on it. And I sign up for mystery stitch alongs more often than I should. Um, I don't usually have any intention of like stitching along. Um, I'm always, like, I'll get to it, but I don't usually like particularly try to like participate and go along. Um, largely because if I want to make changes, I'm not going to know what those changes are until I see what the whole thing looks like. Um, I did this with Dark Queen of the Sea, which I have partially finished and I, I, basically bowed out of I'll, it'll finish it eventually um this is the um autumn lane stitchery um sal that they did last year i um it just wrapped up here recently um i worked on it pretty well i was keeping up for a while but then i reached the point where i had to make decisions and i didn't feel like i could make that decision until i knew what the whole piece looked like so I often, if I sign up for them, don't necessarily have any intention of working on them until I know what the whole piece is going to look like. Um, but I did order the Dinky Dyes floss pack for this, which they're beautiful. I love them. And I bought the larger floss pack because I wasn't sure what count fabric I was going to stitch it on. Um, but Tempting Tangles sells a floss pack for the design. Anyway, Stephanie Webb was showing hers when I watched her floss tube yesterday and I was just like, oh darn it, now I want to get mine out and start it. So last night I just got a small start on it. There's like, it looks like an arch of some sort here. And some autumn leaves. I love the way it looks. Those dinky dye silks are beautiful. They're great to work with. I haven't worked with them much. Um, I've pulled one and worked with it a little bit in a Chatelaine, but that's it so far um, prior to this. This is just a gray, I have it written down. Uh, it's 30 count Parisian gray legacy linen that was the right size and I thought would show off all of the colors well. Because um, there is like a shade of like ecru, like a whitish shade. So, um, I wanted to stay away from like a cream fabric because that would show up well. So anyway, that was fun. And I'm stitching this in hand too. Lately, I've just kind of been like, ah, I'm in the mood to go bother with a Q-snap. I'll just stitch it in hand. Um, it's 
So I do do that one. So much stuff. Um, I think I only have two more. So this is Emerald Mermaid. This is from, um, oh, I'll try to link it. Is it Little Agnes Needle Minders on Etsy? I really like her needle minders um, as well. So this is Emerald Mermaid from Marabilia. It's one of her older pieces. This is one that I'm stitching in hand. That's not gonna go back in. Okay, this is one that I'm stitching in hand as well. It's all rolled up. Um, I roll mine. When I do stitch in hand, I roll them on the side um, to stitch with. And I still have, there's very little done here. And I might end up, may end up frogging this green. I don't even know if you can see it. You can see it in real life. So this, this is some skin starting here on her face. This is like the top of like the bodice of the tail. Um, and then this is like going down the side of her. So, and this is just, this is like a navy blue, I don't remember its exact name, but it's like a navy blue linen um, from Wishels. Um, so this is, so some, some of my Marabilias, like they fall into different categories for me. Some of them I care more about basically. Like Maidens of the Seasons, I care a lot about. Um, uh, red, I care a lot about. Um, what else have I shown you? Renaissance Mermaid, I would have put in that category. Like, I care about it. Um, others, I feel like I'm just playing with, if that makes sense. And I don't, I'm like less worried about them, and I'm more likely to pick them up when I'm tired. Um, they don't feel as meaningful to me and I feel more like I'm just kind of playing and it's more like a, like sometimes more of an experiment. This is more of an experiment for me. So I'm, um, I'm stitching Titania, which I've shown before, um, which is one of the fairies on black fabric. I saw it stitched at an LNS once on black fabric, just plain black. And it was stunning. Just, no words. It was so stunning. And so I started thinking, God, I would love to see a Mirabilia on like really dark navy blue fabric. Um, and I wonder if, I wonder if that would work. I wonder if you'd get that like same effect that you get with Titania on black. So it's kind of like an experiment. I'm just stitching it in hand. I have no idea if or when it'll ever be done. I may end up changing this green because this dark green, I think will end up being fine in the tail because there's some more color on the outside of that. But um, that dark green is also in the leaves and like the seaweed that floats along beside her and um, might not show up. I was thinking of maybe switching the leaves to like a water lily or something um, that has lighter tones in it and seeing if that if that would work out better for her. So we'll see, but yeah, this Emerald Mermaid is, um, I would definitely categorize as something that I'm just kind of playing with, experimenting with it. Um, I just put a few stitches in on it the other night and I was kind of too tired to, to focus on something else. The last whip I have to show you. Does anybody else like their mouth get dry when they're talking this much? Um, the last whip I have to show you is um, Butterfly Mermaid. Wait, no, Butterfly Mermaid. Oh my goodness. Butterfly Fairy from Mirabilia. Yeah, Butterfly Fairy. This one is um, MD75. Um, this is one of my favorites. This is one I care about so much. And it's one of those that it's a favorite and I love it. And so I never work on it. I don't know what that is. I don't know if I'm like saving it for last. I don't know if I'm just like worried to mess it up. I don't know, but this is ridiculous. So um, I was working on um, Renaissance Mermaid a whole lot and then was like, I need pretty. And so I started Florin working on Florentina a little bit. And as I was working on Florentina one evening, I was like, 
Florentina is not one of my favorites. I like her, but she is not one of my favorites. Why don't I pick out one of my Mirabilias that's one of my favorites that's also that like pretty <laughs> and work on that. And um, that seemed to be for me Butterfly Fairy. I love this one and I love the fabric um, that I have her on. I am not going to take it out of my Q-snap. Um, you can see, so this is, you can see basically everything that I have done here. Um, part of the reason I want to show this is because I feel like this demonstrates really well my stitching style and how I usually approach a Mirabilia. On, um, you know, on floss tube a lot, I'll see people who are very obviously stitching top down or who have like, they have a page break. You know, like they've obviously stitched a page and then they move on to the next page. It's just not my style at all. I kind of wonder sometimes if I'm the only one who does it this way, but I am a stitch what you feel like stitching kind of person. So I jump all over the place. Um, if I feel like putting in some hair, I'll put in some hair. If I feel like doing wing, I'll put in wing or dress. This is the butterfly that she that's landed on her hand. So, um, I, what I really like about jumping around, aside from the fact that then like I can stitch whatever like color I'm in the mood for, if I feel like stitching something that's more blocks of color or something that's more confetti-ish, I can like whatever I want, it's fine. I like that how, I like how as I stitch, the, the outline or the, the structure of the figure starts to appear. So this isn't very much stitching, but I can see the general form that she's taking. This is obviously her hair and her wing, the shoulder of her dress. This is where her shoulder will be, and this is her dress going over her shoulder. This is the part of the dress behind her and her bodice. This is the wing of the butterfly that's on her hand. So I don't have much stitching here, but I can see like the whole form of, of the upper part of her figure um, and kind of like the skeleton of, of what it's ultimately going to become. I find this enjoyable because for a while as you're stitching, you're kind of sketching out more of that skeleton, getting more and more of an idea of what she's gonna look like. And then at some point you reach the point where you're now not sketching out skeleton. The skeleton's all done. You understand the outline of where everything's gonna be. And then you're just filling in and finishing parts. Um, and I find that helps keep my interest and keep my excitement more through the whole process. Um, I love being able to see kind of the outline of the whole thing, even without that much stitching into the piece. And I like having options of like deciding where I wanna stitch. Um, but when I picked this up a couple days ago, the only thing I had done was this pink here and these and these. I added everything up there, the wings, the butterfly there, this pink. Actually, I didn't have that pink done because this, and then I moved over there, is all new. Um, I'm really, really enjoying stitching on her right now. She's hitting that like that sweet spot I needed of just like pretty, just needing pretty stitching. Um, also, so part of it's the fabric. I have no idea. I don't think this fabric's available anymore. I'm looking at this. I have a, I have my fabric slip from years ago. Did anybody ever go to Counted Stitches in North Augusta? Um, if anybody, the store closed years ago but if any of you ever went there, I love this place. This place is basically how I learned about stitching. Um, I, you know, gotten some stitching stuff from a big box store, but this was like the actual stitching store. It was my first LNS. First one I ever went into. The woman who ran it was amazing. She taught me so much. Love her to pieces. Very good memories of this place. If anybody else ever went in there. So this says it's Mer Mirin, M-E-R-A-N. It's a 28 count. Um, it actually feels like it might be like 27 or 26 count, 
but that might also be because I'm used to hand dyeds. Um, I stitch Mirabilia's almost exclusively on 28 count um, hand dyed fabrics, and this is not hand dyed. Um, so it might just be that it's 20, it's what 28 count actually is before it shrinks in the hand dyeing process. Um, light teal green. Um, I think I looked this up and found that it was like a cotton that's meant to mimic looking like linen, which it does. It feels like cotton, but it has the like kind of uneven texture that you get with like linen and slubs. Um, but the color, I love the color so very much. I don't know why I'm just like holding this up so you can see my my slip from when I bought the fabric. Love the color so much. Um, that's a really good representation of it. And I feel like it's going to look fabulous behind her. I really, really love it. So at least at the moment, it definitely has all my attention and I'm finding it super inspiring to stitch on. I think that might be it. That's not too bad. Just a little over an hour. Um, I'm not going to show any quilting today. I haven't done much quilting. Um, haven't felt like sitting at my sewing machine, um, especially with being sick. And then I really have been like in the grips of like just mirabilia passion here lately. Just want to work on all of them. I'm having so much fun. Um, picking up things like I that I don't have a particular time frame in mind for finishing them they're just enjoyable to stitch on I love picking up butterfly fairy and just enjoying that beautiful teal green fabric I loved just picking up frog princess and that like purpley glittery fabric and enjoying that um, I'm just having fun which you know is what we're supposed to be doing so Stitching is going well <laughs> these days, um, and hopefully will continue to, to go well. I am looking forward to getting back to my Teresa Wenslers, um next week once my kids are, are back in school for a full week. Um, but thank you guys for joining me. Um, this is still fun to do. Hopefully I'll be back. Ooh, there's a holiday coming up. Hopefully I'll be back, I'm going to say probably early December probably, um, with an update, um, and hopefully some, some progress on some things. I hate saying like what I plan to do because it'll change. I mean, at the moment, I just want to keep stitching Butterfly Fairy, um, and hopefully next week be working on Princess and the Dragon, but for all I know, you're going to come back here in my next floss tube and I'll have worked on a dozen projects that are completely different. <laughs> than the projects that I showed you today. Um, oh, one other thing I did want to show you. So my daughter and I, I love my daughter. I love all of my kids, but this story is about my daughter. We were laying in bed a few weeks ago and looking at, um, like I was, does anyone else do this? Just go to the Mirabilia website or like go to 123 Stitch and just look at the Mirabilias. I already own them all. There's no reason. <laughs> to shop I own all of them I have well all of them that are currently available I have most of them kitted up at least with the specialty materials because I live in fear of Mill Hills being um, discontinued <laughs> and me being like but it's not gonna be perfect if I don't have the call for bead that bead made it perfect so they're like kitted up I've got everything um, I still just go and like scroll <laughs> and like fantasize about having them all on my walls. Well, anyway, I was doing this the other day, well, a couple weeks ago with my daughter and I'm just scrolling and I scrolled past this one, which I had kitted up and she was like, Ooh, mom. And I know in my last video I was telling you guys, like, tell me about the like blingiest Mirabilia cause she loves bling and I want to do like the blingiest thing possible. Um, for her and I do think I'm gonna do moon flowers is it called for her but anyway when I start that I'll show it to you so I'm just scrolling she saw this and was like oh mom mom can we do that one together I was so so
so moved. I was so excited. Not only does she want this one, she wants us to stitch it together. That's amazing. Um, so my daughter's seven. She's only ever used Ada. Um, she enjoys stitching, but hasn't done very much of it. You know, it's very much a like, I'm in the mood right now, so I'm going to put some stitches in. And I'm not in the mood. I'm not going to work on it. Uh, which is fine. I don't ask her to work on it. It's like I let her determine how much and how fast and, and whatever she wants is fine because I don't want it to be a thing that um, she that she ends up with like negative feelings associated with it. So anyway, she saw this one and was like, Mom, I want us to do that one together. I had it kitted up. And I had it kitted up though with, the only problem was I had it kitted up with linen. And I want this very much to be a as positive of an experience as possible for my daughter. I definitely do not prefer stitching on Ada. It's not even the stitching on it that I don't like as much. I actually like don't like the way it looks as much. Like the stitches obviously look fine, but when, um, like when you can see the Ada squares in the background, I just don't care for that look as much. Nothing against people who, who use it or that's all they use. If that's what you like, then you do it. Um, no judgment for me. It's just not my preference for how I want pieces to look typically when I'm done. Just why I'm more likely to use Ada on a full coverage. But I wanna make sure this is a good experience for her. So the only thing that I did order was the um, Ada was it touch of yellow this is one design that I'm like I'm not doing hand dyed there's a lot going on there um there's a lot and this is one where I'm like I think again nothing against anyone who uh does do hand dyed for this one but my choice is I think using the called for um fabric is probably the best way to go for us so I ordered the Ada <laughs> and it came in and I know my daughter has a plan. We've talked about how, so when my daughter has stitched things, like if, if you follow me on Instagram, you might've seen a couple weeks ago, I posted a heart, like she stitched a heart. Um, it was just like one color. It's just a heart, <laughs> like that's it. But we've talked about, um, you know, she's watched me stitching Mirabilia's and, and they, like to her, they look very complicated. And I was explaining to her that like, they're really just blobs of color, right? Like here's a white blob and then there's a blue blob and then there's a different blue blob and they're just, they're just blobs of color. That's all they are. So she wants us to take turns stitching blobs, <laughs> which I think is adorable. <sighs> I don't know if it's just cause it's my kid, but I'm so excited about this. We haven't started yet. I'm just waiting for her to be like, yeah, I want to start now, <laughs> um, which I'm guessing is going to be this weekend. Um, but she wants to start up here. Um, I need to, uh, I've told you I pre-wash like water lilies and all that sort of thing. I need to pre-wash the water lilies for this um, so that they're ready because I know some of those blobs are going <laughs> to, the blobs she wants to, to do first. But yeah, I get to, I'm going to get to take turns stitching blobs on a Mirabilia with my daughter and I am thrilled very happy about that anyway um i'm sure you can tell how excited i am um thanks for joining me today um i hope you guys are all having a great time on the projects that you're working on um if you have any questions for me um especially if i forget to like link things <laughs> in the description box i still feel like i'm very new to this um, please just um, comment and ask me or you can message me on Instagram and ask me and I will do my best to track down information or answer any questions that you might have. Um, so thanks again for joining me guys and uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks.